Hello, and thank you for joining me for today's Easter Sunday video message. Now, before I get into my message, I first want to convey my deep and heartfelt appreciation for your support of my YouTube channel and these weekly messages that I bring. Your prayers, your replies sent to me by text message or email, as well as any financial contributions you can send, all of these help ensure that the ministry of my church family will continue to reach out and bless people in the places of their need. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my message with you today. And thank you for any support you can give. I celebrate your partnership in my ministry. And speaking of celebrating, who doesn't love a celebration? Everyone loves a celebration. Throughout our lives, we celebrate many things. We celebrate births and birthdays, a baby's first steps or a baby's first words. We celebrate sweet 16 parties and getting our driver's license. We celebrate buying our first car and graduations from high school, college, and graduate school. We celebrate marriage and buying a first home and we celebrate welcoming home soldiers as they return from overseas deployments. But in the midst of life, we also experience many challenges. When we're in school, tests and exams can be a challenge. Relationships can be challenging. Broken friendships, engagements, and marriages can be difficult to bear. And then there are natural disasters such as earthquakes, fires, storms, and flooding. These all can bring about serious difficulty to our lives. And poor crops or harvests and yields, these can lead to food and financial challenges. And then there's sickness, which we've seen a lot of in this past year with COVID-19. We've experienced or have known of people who have experienced suffering and even death. Jesus himself went through good times and bad, too. During his lifetime, he celebrated his bar mitzvah, that is, his coming-of-age celebration. He celebrated his baptism, his victory over temptation. He celebrated weddings, like the wedding at Cana, and miracles, such as when he turned water into wine at Cana, or when he raised the widow's son at the city of Nain back to life, or Jairus' daughter back to life, or when he raised his good friend Lazarus back to life. And like us, Jesus faced his share of challenges too. He faced criticism from his immediate family. For example, on one occasion, his mother, brothers, and sisters thought that Jesus had lost his mind because he was spending so much time working with other people in ministry. He also experienced misunderstandings among his own disciples such as the time James and John wanted to be greater in God's kingdom than the others, and the time that Peter denied three times that he even knew Jesus. And in his thirties, Jesus himself suffered an undeserved arrest, trial, torture, imprisonment, and finally death on a cross. But as we recognize such things as these, every one of us, like Jesus, have opportunity to look forward to the ultimate celebration in all of life, and that is the fact of our resurrection from the dead and our transition into the eternal realm of God's love and grace, as has been demonstrated in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus himself. Since I first began my ministry with the Pendleton First Christian Church on November 1 of 2003, I've officiated at 144 funerals, 83 of these, for church members or relatives of our church family whose names you see scrolling here on the screen. Make no mistake, I miss people such as these whom I've drawn close to in my life and ministry. The experience of grief is very real and undeniable, but I cherish the truth that the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves to us that there is life beyond this one as we know it here on earth. And that's what we recognize and celebrate this Easter Sunday. This is what we read about in John chapter 20, 
verses 11 through 18. That text reads as follows. Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent over to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white. They were seated where Jesus' body had been. One of them was where Jesus' head had been laid. The other sat where his feet had been placed. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. And then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said, Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him. Then I will go and get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him, and then she cried out in the Aramaic language, Rabboni. Rabboni, by the way, means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. I have not yet returned to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with this news. She said, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he had said these things to her. This coming Friday, April 9th, I will officiate at the graveside service for Waverly Faircloth. Then just nine days later, on April 18th, I will lead a service in memory of Scott Jacobson. Just nine days ago, on March 25th, I officiated at a Celebration of Life service on Zoom in memory of Bob Tompkins. And at a date yet to be determined, I will officiate as a Celebration of Life service for Marie Groschon. At all such services as these, there undoubtedly will be some crying. Even as we celebrate the lives and faith of such people as these in my church family, we will also experience the shedding of tears. In the midst of this, however, there is cause for celebration, because we know that in the life that is to come, there is glory that comes from God to be experienced, glory greater than any we've ever experienced while on this earth. I'd like you to listen to what John the Apostle has written in Revelation 21, verse 4. And I'll quote that script, that text. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And listen now to these words of the psalmist as recorded in Psalm chapter 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me! The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Think for a moment about the most momentous celebration you've ever experienced in your lifetime to this day. Was it a wedding, a birth, an accomplishment, or some special achievement? Greater than anything we've ever experienced or ever will experience in our lifetimes, the moment we enter life everlasting is assured to us by Jesus. Then we will experience the ultimate celebration the greatest celebration that we could ever know. In closing, listen to these words of Jesus as I recite them 
and as they are recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. In that text of John's Gospel, this is what it says. Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I would not tell you this if it were not true. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Then I will take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. Oh, what a promise. What a hope. And what a day of rejoicing that will be. Please join me in prayer. Our God, through the gift of your love and grace, and the gift of Jesus Christ's life given for us. We have this blessed assurance, this everlasting hope, that life does not end at the grave. We have this knowledge that life for us will be forever and eternal in your realm. It's not that we deserve this necessarily, but it's because of your great love, O God. You love us so much so, so much, that you have given us opportunity to live a life more abundant here while we are on the earth and a life everlasting with you in glory for the all time to come. We thank you for this assurance, O oh God. We thank you for this truth. And now receive our praise, receive our gratitude, <laughs> receive our hearts, and may our lives represent your love well. May the deeds that we exhibit while here on this earth demonstrate your grace so that others may come to know you too through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.